Hello, Math 1341 Calculus 1 students. This is quiz four, extra practice. Um, you see the sections here. Quiz four covers, well, this is the derivatives of, say, log base a and a to the x. And then we have our trigonometric functions in 2, 7, and 2, 8. We should be able to not only take the derivatives of functions that have trigonometry in them, but also evaluate. And you will see this reflected in the quiz extra practice. Now, one thing we've started talking about in class is motion in space and parameterized curves. Um, but that will come on next week's quiz. You see, I do have just motion along a line on this week's quiz where the position function involves, um, well, some trigonometry. Uh, this definitely is something we can handle now for this week because motion along a line and the ideas of position, velocity, acceleration, this has been going on for uh, since the very beginning of the semester. Okay, so let's get started on the problems for extra practice for quiz four. We want to find critical points for this function x to the fifth times two to the x. Th these are x values in the domain such that the derivative is zero or does not exist. This function, the domain is minus infinity to infinity, this function here. Um, but the first step is to take the derivative. This is product rule. So we have first times derivative of the second. This is two to the x times natural log of two. And then we have second times um, derivative of the first. This is the derivative. In terms of derivative not existing, that does not happen. This derivative is defined everywhere. And so the only critical points are where the derivative is zero. And um, as I set the derivative to zero, let's factor out what's common to both terms. Both terms have an x to the fourth. Both terms have a two to the x. And then I'm left with um, ln two times x. And the second term, I'm left with five. So this here is my factored first derivative, okay? Now, we, we can see precisely when this is zero, um, x to the fourth equals zero. This happens when x is zero, the only time. Two to the x is never zero. This is an exponential function. It's always positive. And then this part, ln two times x plus five, equals zero, well, we can just solve for x here. We get that um, x equals, subtract the five, and then divide by natural log two. And so we have precisely two critical points, um, zero and minus five divided by natural log of two. This is the answer to number one. Number two, this problem is almost directly off last fall's final exam. In fact, I think letter A was exactly like that. And then letter B, I just changed slightly. But um, it's a great problem because we have to take derivatives and we also have to evaluate some things. So maybe the first thing I'll do in letter A is just calculate the derivative as a function of x. You notice the information we're given. F and G are differentiable. And then we have f of two is zero, f prime of two is seven, g of two is four, and g prime of two is minus three. So we will use that information. Um, so first the derivative, we have denominator times derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times, well, when you go to differentiate the denominator, this is technically chain rule because inside the cosine, I have a pi x. And so we take derivative of the outside, which is minus sine, okay, evaluated at the inside, and then multiply by derivative of the inside function. My inside function has derivative pi, okay? Then we have to finish the quotient rule. This is all over 
denominator squared. Now, for A, we want all of this at two. So at X equals two, well, we have cosine of two pi, we have G prime of two minus, well, actually, uh, let me make a comment here. You see, I have a minus and another minus. Altogether, I have a plus. I'm gonna make that a plus. And then I have um, G of two times the sine of two pi times pi, and then all over cosine of two pi squared. But we know um, here the cosine of two pi, this, I'll write it above, is one. And the sine of two pi, this, is zero. Okay, we also have down here, cosine of two pi, this again is one. And so this makes our life much simpler. We just have g prime of two, which we're told is negative three, um, plus g of two, it's fine, it's four, but we have times zero, right, times pi, and then all over one squared, which is one. Altogether, we just get negative three, okay? So this is my answer in uh, 2a, and now let's work on 2b. As before, first I just differentiate the function, and then I will evaluate at two. Um, you notice looking at this, this is a not natural log. This is log, well, if we just see log, it's base 10. And so there is an understood little 10 down here. And okay, first thing you notice I have chain rule. So the derivative of the outside function, my outside function is log base 10. We have one over ln 10 times, um, would be x, right? But then I evaluate at my inside function, x plus f of x. This was derivative of the outside, evaluated at the inside, and then don't forget your parentheses, but times derivative of the inside function. This would be one plus f prime of x. Well, now we just do the same as above. At x equals two, what do we have? We have one over um, ln 10. And then we have two plus f of two. Then we multiply by one plus f prime of two. What is all of this? Well, we look above. f of two is just zero. So in my denominator, I have a two ln 10. And in my numerator, um, f prime of two is seven. This is one plus seven. And um, you notice my numerator is eight and I have a two in the denominator. So I can just make this four divided by natural log of 10. And this is my final answer in uh, letter 2B. Number three. Well, um, this is a great question. It came off like quiz four from last fall. But you see, not only do we have to differentiate a function that has cosine and sine in it, we also are going to have to evaluate. So we have to remember our trigonometry here. First thing I see is a product. I have one function times another. And so I'm going to use product rule. We have first times the derivative of the second, and then plus the second times, well, derivative of the first derivative of cosine is negative sine. So my derivative is cosine squared minus sine squared. Okay, great. Now, letter B. Um, we want an equation of the tangent line. We know a point on my graph, also on my tangent line is pi over three comma f of pi over three. And we know the slope. This is the derivative evaluated at pi over three. 
Now, you see, we're going to have to be evaluating the sine and cosine at pi over 3. And so let me draw a unit circle. Pi over 3 is up here, OK? Um, and the point that's on my unit circle is, well, here, let's see. The sine is bigger than the cosine. So it's 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2, OK? f of pi over 3 is cosine pi over 3 times sine pi over 3. This is 1 half times the square root of 3 over 2. And so we get the square root of 3 over 4. When you see something like this on a quiz, you want to leave numbers like this sort of as you find them. You don't want to type this in your calculator and get some decimal approximation. OK, leave it like this. Now, the next part, the derivative at pi over 3, um, well, we have the derivative here. This would be cosine squared pi over 3 minus sine squared pi over 3. Cosine squared is um, 1 fourth. And then we have minus 3 over 4. So this is negative 1 half. This is my slope. And in fact, Maybe I should go back now and add this. We have pi over 3, and we calculated this to be the square root of 3 over 4. Right. Now we have everything we need. We have a point. We have a slope. And so I can write down an equation of this tangent line would be y minus y1 equals m and then x minus x1. Okay. This is the answer to number three, b, <laughs> three b. Number four, this one was also on quiz four from last fall. We want to find the first and second derivatives of this function g. Um, you notice if you look at g, we see an inside function. This is going to be chain rule where we first take derivative of the outside. Derivative of tangent is secant squared and then evaluated at the inside. OK, multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is uh, seven. Let's see. I'll write it this way. I'll just put the constant on the other side. We have seven secant squared of seven y plus one. This is the first derivative. Now I need to take the second derivative. Understand what is this function? Well, it's seven, and then we have secant seven y plus one squared. That's what this is. We're going to have the chain rule two times here. First, our most outside function, our most outside function is this part seven squared. And so let's get started uh, by differentiating sort of the most outside function. We have 14. And then it would be power minus one would be a first power. And then we put in the entire secant 7y plus one. Now multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And right now, this is my inside function, OK? Just like I was saying, we have chain rule again. To differentiate secant of 7y plus 1, this is chain rule. First, we take the derivative of the secant. This is secant tangent, OK? And we evaluate this at the inside function, which is 7y plus 1 and 7y plus 1. So far, when just differentiating this, I have derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside. Now multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is another times 7. Because just as in the, the first derivative calculation, the derivative of 7y plus 1 is 7. OK, this looks great. This is our second derivative right here. Number five, this is the last one. We have a motion along a line, okay? And position function given here, p of t is two times the sine of pi t over two. We wanna find the velocity and acceleration at t equals two. 
Well, to begin this problem, we know the velocity is the derivative of position. We know the acceleration is either, you can think derivative of velocity or second derivative of position. So first let's calculate the velocity as a function of time. As I said, this is the first derivative of position. Um, the derivative of sine is cosine, but now I have a chain rule. You see, I have this inside function, pi t over two. So it's derivative of the outside, evaluated at the inside, and then times, well, the derivative of the inside function is pi over two. Altogether, you see we have pi cosine of pi t over two. Now, let's evaluate this at two, the velocity at time t equals two is pi cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative one. So this is negative pi. Now, letter B. It's very similar, except we want acceleration at time two. So the first thing I need to do is calculate the acceleration as a function of time. This is the first derivative of velocity. It's also the second derivative of position, but I just take this and differentiate. So we write down our constant and then the derivative of cosine is minus sine, okay? Once again, it's a chain rule. So evaluate it at the inside, okay? Times derivative of the inside function, derivative of pi t over two is pi over two. Now I could write this as, let's say negative pi squared over two sine pi t over two. What I want is acceleration at two. And so this is minus pi squared over two times the sine of pi. But you see the sine of pi, this is zero. And so I'm just left with zero. Okay, so the acceleration at time two is zero. This is what we have calculated here. And this is the end of quiz four extra practice. Thank you very much. Good luck on the quiz.